Hello and welcome back to the Simple System tutorial video series. In this segment I'm going to be dealing with story elements or how the flipping of cards is going to be influencing the story as you are playing. First of all let me go ahead and talk about the actual resolution decks and how as you're flipping cards you and the GM uh, the results are going to show different effects that are actually going on that affect the story of the game. So first of all, let me deal with critical successes and critical failures. So if I go ahead and flip this top card here, all right, uh, you can see this is a little bit different than the cards that we flipped before. This card is a critical success. And in this case, if I flip this card, not only do I succeed in what it was that I was trying to attempt as a character, but there's some sort of additional benefit, some sort of bonus that came as a, as a result of my attempt. For example, let's say that I was attempting to knock down a door. Not only do I blow right through that door if I flip this card, but perhaps I even knock out the guard who was standing on the other side, and I can just now step right over. That would be a good example of a critical success. Let me go ahead and flip another card here. Oh no, that doesn't look good. This is a critical failure. This is really just the opposite of a critical success. Not only do I fail at what it was I was attempting to do, but something went wrong. There's some sort of consequence, some sort of result that's going to make my life more difficult as a result of my attempt. So again, let's say that I was trying to break down that door. If I flip this card, not only do I fail in breaking down that door, but let's say that door was more than a match for me. As a matter of fact, I ended up injuring my, el my shoulder on that door. And that's going to make my life more difficult as I go forward. Uh, either it's going to um, affect some of my future attempts. The GM may even go so far as to say that I've earned myself a complication card. And that's really going to impact what I'm going to do from here on out until my shoulder gets better. Uh, more on this in a moment. But again, these are your critical successes and critical failures. Really strong impact on the story when you flip one of these cards. And how exactly it influences the story? Well, that's up to your GM. There are a couple other uh, things that are going to affect the story that are baked into the resolution cards as you're playing. And those are known as favorable failures and bungled successes. So let me just go ahead and show you an example of those. Let's say, as a player, I go ahead and flip this card. Okay, I got a check. I'm feeling pretty good about that. The GM flips the difficulty and, oh no. I fail uh, because he flipped more checks than I do. However, because I flipped checks and I still failed, this is what's known as a favorable failure. So I didn't really get to do exactly what I was trying to do, but something good happened as a result of my attempt. Let's say, for example, that maybe I'm trying to shoot the rope that's about to hang my best friend and I take a shot at the rope this is the result and of course I fail I miss the rope however it's a favorable failure so instead of hitting the rope maybe I uh, wing the hangman and he's unable to throw the lever and thus my friend is saved uh, of course then I would claim that that's what I wanted to do all along, right? But that's a good example of a favorable failure, something that's not exactly what I had in mind, but it ended up working to my advantage in some way. Let's look at another example. Okay, this time, all right, I flip an X, so I'm a little bit nervous. I don't know how this is going to turn out. The GM flips the difficulty, and what do you know? I still beat him because I have fewer checks than he does. However, even though I succeeded, because I succeeded with a check, or I'm sorry, with a strike, 
that means that this is a bungled success. So even though I accomplished what I wanted to, something went wrong. Something as a result of my attempt is actually going to turn out to make my life a little bit difficult. Let's say, for example, that I was trying to convince a guard that I was a fire inspector and I'm flipping my charisma. This is my result. I beat his wisdom flip. However, he's a little bit suspicious of me, even though he allows me to go in and take a look around. So as soon as I'm out of sight, he calls his supervisor to ask if there was any sort of inspection scheduled for the day. And of course, that's going to catch up with me as a player. So again, these are story elements that are baked into the card flipping resolution mechanic. And the story is going to constantly be taking turns in your favor and against it, whether you're succeeding or failing, depending on the results of your flips. I just want to spend another minute talking about some of the resources that both players and game masters have at their disposal to further influence the story. Uh, the first one that I'll talk about, these are uh, hero points and story points. These actually go into the player's hand. At the beginning of each campaign, each session rather, uh, every player is given three hero points and one story point. And they're able to spend these throughout the course of the game in order to have various effects. First of all, the hero point. Let's say that uh, I flip something. Let's say I went ahead and, and flipped this as a player. And I'm really unhappy with that result. And I want to try it again. So I would go ahead, turn in one of these hero points, and that would give me the chance to flip another card. Okay, that's a lot better. That's one way you can spend a hero point. Another way is, let's say, for example, that... Let me go ahead and throw those on the bottom. Let's say that uh, my ability is at yellow, and I'm going to make an attempt using my, my ability at that level, but I just want to give myself a little better chance to improve that attempt. So I can go ahead and spend a hero point, turn that into the Game Master, and that allows me to turn up my attempt by one step. So now if I flip red, okay, you can see, in this case, I flipped double check, whereas if I had been flipping yellow, in that case, I would have flipped a single strike. So in that case, spending my hero point made a big difference. It went a long way as to whether or not I'm going to succeed at this attempt. The final way that you can spend your hero points that affect the story is any attempt you make, you can declare you're going to spend a hero point beforehand, and then instead of flipping a single card, you get to flip three cards. One, two, three. And of those three, you get your choice of which card you want to use. So in this case, obviously, I'm going to go with this card because it gave me the best result. Let's just do that one more time. One, two, three. Okay, again, the best card of, out of these was this critical success here, so that's definitely the one that I'm going to go with. So these hero points are quite powerful in attempting or in modifying any attempts that you're making as a player and your chances of success and of course that drives the story along uh, in the way that you would like it to go in your favor. The next tool that you have is your story point. Now the story point isn't going to affect anything here well, with your resolution deck or with your flipping. Uh, the story point gives you as a player some sort of creative control over the story, over the environment. With the story point you can add something to the environment or change something in the environment that gives your character something more to work with. Maybe you add an electrified cable 
or loose rocks sitting above the enemy encampment, or maybe some exploding barrels. Uh, and those are things that your character, those they were not there in the scene before. The GM didn't put them there. He wasn't planning on them. But spending this story point, all of a sudden you've added them there. And while that, that in itself hasn't won you the encounter, it hasn't uh, made anything that you attempt from here on out automatically successful, it's giving you something to work with. As an example, in the last campaign that I played with my gaming group, uh, one of my players was pinned against the wall by a particularly nasty mercenary that they had encountered. And he spent his story point to say that within arm's reach, around the corner of the wall he was pinned against, there was a fire extinguisher. And me as the game master, I hadn't put a fire extinguisher there. I hadn't thought about it. But he added that fire extinguisher, and he was then able to reach around that corner, grab that extinguisher, and blast the mercenary in the face with it, which allowed him to escape in that case. So, again, the story point is, as players only get one per session, it's something that has a lot of potential to help them to pull off something amazing as players, to add to the story, uh, and uh, give them a lot of satisfying creative control over how things are going to resolve. Lastly, and you might say leastly, <laughs> uh, are the complication cards. Complication cards are a tool that the game master can use in order to keep track of effects that are making the player's lives more difficult. So, any time that a player is given a complication card, uh, he has to place that next to the flip pile of his deck. And let's say that he's making an attempt. He would flip uh, yellow in this case. Because he has a complication card, he has to flip an extra card. In other words, for every complication card that you have next to your flip pile, you have to draw another card and take the worst result of all the cards that you flip. So uh, instead of flipping a single card, well, that's pretty bad. Let's go ahead and flip another. All right. Uh, the reason you flip two is because you had a complication card, and in this case, you have to take the worst result. This doesn't automatically mean that you're going to fail. <coughs> oh, pardon me. This doesn't automatically mean that you're going to fail. However, it greatly increases the chances of a, a lesser result. Let's say that things are going really bad for you. You're having a really bad day, and you have two complication cards earned at this point. Instead of flipping a single card, let's go ahead and flip red in this case, you would actually flip one, two, three cards in this case, and again... Unfortunately, you have to go with the worst results, so that's what you're stuck with. How do you get rid of complication cards? Well, if it's the result of maybe getting poked in the eyeball, it probably is only going to uh, affect your very next attempt. And so after that attempt, the GM will say, okay, go ahead and turn back in your complication card. However, let's say you've got a complication card because you've broken a bone. That's something that's not going to go away until your character has a chance to get some medical attention to heal up a little bit. So you may be stuck with that for the remainder of an encounter. Again, that's at the GM's discretion, and it is a tool that he can use to keep track of things that are happening to your characters and that are going to influence the story in meaningful ways. Okay, thank you very much for... Uh, listening. This is probably the longest tutorial I've had so far, um, but it dealt with a lot of what makes the the mechanic. While it's still pretty basic, it's still simple. Uh, it there's a lot going on that's influencing the story. Thanks again, and tune in next time when I deal with character creation. <laughs>